Hi, I'm Ron Clark. I'm going to talk today about addiction in the context of character transformation. Lately I've gotten several questions regarding people's addictions and their struggle with addiction and trying to transform themselves. So, uh, addictions come in all shapes and forms. Uh, when we think of addiction, we mostly think of substance addiction. Alcohol, you know, uh, opioids, fentanyl, it's, it's these things we usually think of. So, there are addictions to substances, usually mind-altering substances. But they can be all kinds of substances. Milk. <laughs> One can have an addiction to milk. Um, so, there's the substance addiction. Then there's emotional addictions. We can become addicted to emotions. Fear, love, romance, uh, anger, shame. All of these are addictable. <laughs> uh, then there's addiction to activities. Gambling, going to the gym, um, watching pornography, uh, drinking milk, you know. <laughs> Addictions come in every shape and size and form and it's just what we make of it. So an addiction is a relationship in which uh, the emotion, the substance, or the activity produces a reward but extracts a cost at the same time. So that's what we, I would call an addiction. There's an exchange of energy <clears throat> and uh, you get the short stick, basically. Uh, it, 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 it's sort of a dead end. It gives an emotional fulfillment but no mental fulfillment. And it gives a physical fulfillment. Okay? Because there's always a physiological component with an addiction. No matter what kind of addiction it is. It either uh, gives you an orgasm, gives you, uh, <clears throat> you know, a, a different reality because your mind is so bent or gives you a, a, a hormonal a shift from an emotion like sadness. So there is the reward, a physiological reward and an emotional reward because it is ultimately a, a trying to meet an emotional need that brings you to participation in the addiction. There is an emotional need at the root of any addiction. And eventually a physiological need uh, because you, know, you repeat the addictive exchange and you get that physiological reward and you become dependent on the physiological reward. So there's sort of a double bind right here. A double <clears throat> hook. <clears throat> Physical and emotional. We've got you by, you know, these two hooks, these two claws uh, uh, grab you in the addictive exchange, okay? And keep you there. Motivate you to stay there, basically because you're getting this fulfillment. But there is not an, a mental fulfillment. There is never an, a mental fulfillment in an addiction because you can always you step back from the addiction and you see that, hey, this is a negative thing. You know, it's messing with my life. Okay? It's taking over my life. <clears throat> in an extreme example. Um, 
So, <clears throat> addictions also always involve an egregore, which means <clears throat> an energy entity, <clears throat> mental energy, an emotional energy entity, uh, created by the, that exchange. Um, and in most addictions that are popular, such as opioids, or pornography, or shame, <clears throat> these are more than just an individual egregore that, you know, uh, like the egregore that develops between me and the person I'm talking to, okay, that sort of temporary, momentary egregore, that combination of, of awareness and energy exchange. Um, <clears throat> so this is a cultural egregore, uh, an egregore of the moment uh, of civilization. You know, the, the number of people drinking and sharing in that alcohol egregore is outstanding. It is a very strong egregore. Or pornography. That egregore is very strong currently. It's sort of new, you know, and it's really powerful. It's really taking hold because it's got all of these tools at its disposal to develop that inter interaction, that interchange of energy, okay? And shame. <clears throat> shame is so pervasive in our cultures. Every culture, you know, has shame. Some more than others. <clears throat> so, that has another, a big egregore. You know, an addiction to drinking milk probably has a very weak egregore. <laughs> because not that many people do it. Okay. So, in dealing with an addiction in character transformation, now, it, they're a real bugger. They're, they are difficult. And they're challenging. And you have to be prepared for a challenge. It's going to be painful in some form or another. It's going to be a struggle at a physical and an astral level, not so much at a mental level. So this is where your power lies in the beginning, is that mental <clears throat> distancing and, you know, frankly observing what the addiction is, and what it does to you. <clears throat> and in your analysis, you've got to come down to what the addiction, what is that need that is, you are trying to meet through this addiction? And that's a pretty deep question, ultimately. Okay? It takes a lot of digging to get down there. Why? Am I doing this? What need, what empty space in me is there that I'm trying to fill in this way? <clears throat> and you have to understand what that is. And just truly examine it with absolute honesty. Okay, and then accept that you have that need. <clears throat> that's fundamental to uh, dealing with an addiction, is you have to accept the need that exists that you are trying to fulfill in this way of the addiction. Okay? So for me, when I was a young man, <clears throat> in the second half of the 70s and very early 80s, uh, I had a sexual addiction. Every moment of my day was focused around meeting that sexual addiction and having just as much sex as I possibly could. 
eventually I realized that this wasn't meeting my need. There was always this desire for something new and different. Um, but what I discovered in there, at the very root of it, was about love. <clears throat> Wanting, needing to find love, sort of a romantic, you know, movie kind of, of love that would just sweep me off my feet and take me away. That was down there. But even deeper than that was about self-love. Because I was needing to get that love externally. Not providing it to myself, you know, because there was plenty of actual real love in my life. So I didn't really need to, you know, have this romantic version of it. <clears throat> but what it really came down to was loving myself, which <clears throat> up to that point in my life was like, you know, what's that? You know, it just came out of my teenage years, for Christ's sake, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, there is such, so little self-love at that point in life. And that's what it was for me. So when I realized what it was, I was able to create ways to meet that need, that inner need for self-love and to increase the love around me in my life without it being a, this constant obsession with sex. Okay. <clears throat> So that's the trick. You have to <clears throat> wrap your brain around what that essential need is that you're trying to meet. You know, is it just escapism? I want to escape from this world. You know, that's a valid need. You know, and there are other ways to meet that need, constructive, positive ways to meet that need, other than, you know, this uh, mind-altering substance. <clears throat> Not that there's anything wrong with mind-altering substances. What is wrong in this case is the addiction. That's the thing you have to focus on, is the addiction. Not the substance or the emotion or the action, but the addiction, okay? <clears throat> For example, uh, we could say that I'm addicted to smoking. I smoke continuously. But, for me, it's a pleasure. It's about quality of life. I enjoy smoking, therefore I smoke. I do it in ways that are less physically harmful. <clears throat> but still, I smoke because I want to smoke. So, <clears throat> this doesn't quite qualify as an addiction because it's not something that I have to do. I've proven that to myself in the past. I don't want to prove that to myself right now because I enjoy smoking. So, <clears throat> it's not the activity or the substance or <clears throat> the emotion that you need to address. It's the addiction that you need to address. And in order to break that addiction, you have to confront uh, honor the existence of, uh, uh, deal with the egregore that has developed. And, you know, some of these egregores of different addictions are indeed very strong, very persuasive, uh, powerful. So, you've got to prepare yourself 
to uh, be strong in yourself, to have a grounding in your own wisdom here, uh, your own true needs, and stand up, stand up to, stand up against that egregore, basically to say, no, I'm not going to give you my energy. I'm just not. I'm going to meet those needs in other ways. So you have to take power in that, that relationship and say, no more. I'm not giving you this energy. I'm not taking this substance in order to give you this energy. Uh, I'm not doing this activity in order to give you this energy. <clears throat> I'm not going to obsess about this emotion in order to give you this energy, because that's what it's about. You know, the, the addiction, the... The, the addictive activity, the addictive uh, use of substance, the addictive obsession with the emotion, this gives energy to the egregore. It's feeding the egregore. And the egregore, you know, sticks its claws in you and says, okay, here then is your reward. So, you have to give up that reward. Too, you know, there's <clears throat> it's a bit of a battle with the egregore and with your own desire for that reward. And what you have to do is give you yourself a similar reward, a reward that has to do with the essential root need that the addiction is trying to meet, and it has to be an action. Okay. Because the addiction is an action that you do. <clears throat> In some way, it's an action that you do. So you need to replace that <clears throat> addictive habitual action with a new action. An action that tries to meet that same essential need inside of you. <clears throat> like for me, as a young man, that need to feel love inside of me. <clears throat> so, my actions were all about that. You need to make your actions similar <clears throat> to that, basically, a positive way of meeting that need. So that <clears throat> when you deny the energy to the egregore and deny yourself the reward that you're used to, that you're addicted to, you need to give yourself a different reward that actually meets the need at a physical, astral, emotional, and mental level. See, this is why you have to think it through first. You have to develop that mental component of what you want to change, you know, recognition of what you want to change, what this addictive relationship really is, what you're giving, what you're receiving, and why. You have to have this mental foundation to, in order to empower yourself to say, no, I'm not giving you that energy. And I'm taking this reward, providing myself this reward, instead of the pitiful reward that you've been giving me. Okay. And that reward satisfies you, must satisfy you, at all three levels in order to successfully, you know, deal with the addiction. Because an addiction has to be fought, basically, and it is not... <clears throat> fought is not quite the right word. Challenged confronted, uh, changed. You know? For the most part, this is a habit, like all negative characteristics, all negative traits. It's a habitual activity. So, in the same way as with just a normal, regular character trait, you're replacing one habit 
and a negative habit with a positive habit, you're doing the same thing here. Instead of habitually, you know, accepting that energy or giving that energy and accepting that energy, you say, no, I'm going to do this instead and give myself this reward. So you must meet it on all three levels. And you can't beat yourself up in that process. You know, there's going to be times where you're going to succumb to your addiction. Just like with any character transformation work, you succumb to the old habit. Okay, it's a, it's a habit, you know. It takes time to change a habit. So you're going to succumb to it. You just have to accept that. And it's okay. You're not a failure because you succumb, you know. But what you have to do <clears throat> as an initiate um, is recognize when you succumb, you know, when you give in to the addiction, you have to stop yourself. You know, just like with character, normal character transformation, you have to stop yourself and say, whoa. Hold on a minute. I want to do something else here. So, no, I'm not going to give you my energy. I'm taking it back, okay? And I'm going to do this instead. Now, you have to do that every time, and you just keep doing that. And it's just like with any character transformation, you know, that breaks the old habit and inserts the new habit. And no longer an addiction. It is something under your control. <clears throat> You're not being led <clears throat> on a leash by this egregore that exchanges energy with you. That relationship is kaput. You know? <clears throat> and, you know, just in character transformation in general, you can't beat yourself up over failures because they're just temporary and they're to be expected you know give yourself a break okay be good to yourself be nice to yourself in all of your character transformation you've got to be good to yourself you've got to treat yourself and yeah just be good to yourself okay that's it for me this week Bye-bye.